Average cost inventory valuation results in ending inventory and cost of goods sold valuations in between those reported by FIFO and LIFO valuation methods. Let's look at an example. Let's assume the following inventory data. March 1st, beginning inventory is 200 units at a cost of $10 each. March 4th, uh, we purchased an additional 300 units at a cost of $20 each. March 10th, we sold 400 units at $50 each. Now that's the retail price, not the cost. We will need to figure out the cost by applying the average cost valuation to our data. March 20th, we purchased an additional 500 units at $30 each. March 25th, we sold 300 units at a price of 50. Uh, again, uh, we'll figure out the cost in a minute. Finally, March 30th, we purchased 100 units at $40 each. So if you want to pause the video at this point and write down those numbers, go ahead and then start it up when you're ready. With this data and using moving average, let's record the March 10th and March 25th sales, as well as determine the ending inventory value, assuming this is a perpetual inventory tracker. Since this company uses perpetual inventory, uh, the perpetual method of tracking inventory, the dates of the transactions matter. So we need to list them in chronological order. Additionally, the purchases and sales are recorded when they happen. So I like to present the same data in a big inventory T account. In fact, everything I've listed here isn't dependent on the valuation method. The items that are dependent are the ones highlighted on the credit side of the account. So let's figure those out. Uh, we know on March 10th that we sold 400 units at $50 each. This gives us a sales revenue of $20,000. But how much is the cost of goods sold? Let's apply the moving average to figure this out. In order to figure out the average cost of goods sold on March 10th, we need to figure out the average cost from our beginning inventory and the purchases on March, uh, March 4th. To do that, we add up the units purchased and the total cost of those uh, purchases and then divide the two to get average costs. You can see from the slide that we get average costs of $16 per unit. The $16 per unit is applied not only to the 400 units sold, but also to the remaining 100 units in inventory. So costs of goods sold for the March 10th sale is $6,400. The inventory from that point is 100 units with an average total cost of $1,600. The next decision we need to make happens to, with a sale on March 25th. We sold 300 units at $50 each. So let's figure out cost of goods sold using the average cost. To do that, we take the 500 units purchased on March 20th and add them to the 100 units remaining after the prior sale and the total costs related to those and divide the two to get average costs. You can see from the slide that we get an average cost of $27.67 per unit. So cost of goods sold on March 25th is approximately $8,300. The inventory at this point is 300 units remaining and the average uh, total cost there is also approximately $8,300. So what's the total amount of cost of goods sold and what's the value of the ending inventory? Cost of goods sold is the credit side of the uh, inventory account, which in this case totals $14,700. Ending inventory is the remaining amount on the debit side of the inventory account. There are 300 units with an average cost of $8,300. Uh, this is what was remaining after we deducted our sales. We add to that the 100 units from the March 30th purchase, uh, which has a total cost of $4,000. This totals 400 units of inventory and a value of $12,300. Finally, if we were completing a perpetual inventory record, you can see the purchases are entered in the purchase columns, the units sold are recorded, and notice that they total the costs of goods sold we already computed. March 10th, $6,400, and March 25th, $8,300. 
Finally, ending inventory is the running total that results in 400 units of inventory with a cost of $12,300.